Thanks for joining me today. This is Reverend Folklore from a band Insomniac Folklore, and today I thought I'd try to do something a little bit different. Instead of doing stuff that's directly music or stuff that is uh, doing review video, I thought that I would try doing a monthly segment where I talk about things that have influenced me as a person and maybe more relevantly to this channel as an artist. And the first thing that came to my mind to tackle in this is uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit. Me and Adrian have been going through the Lord of the Rings books, uh, starting with the Cimmerillion and The Hobbit, and we are now uh, gone through Lord of the Rings, or Fellowship of the Rings, uh, Two Towers, and we're on uh, Return of the King right now. Um, we have multiple editions of the Lord of the Rings books. We have Cimmerillion, we have some of the kind of long-form Cimmerillion books. We have the cartoons, the audio drama, which is pretty great, and the Peter Jackson trilogy of films. Um, but today I'm here to talk specifically about The Hobbit. I have this nice hardback here that Adrian got me. And I have to say that all of Tolkien's books have been, in one way or another, really important to me or challenged me or perhaps changed the way I thought about certain things and have hit me at different times throughout my life in different ways. Uh, the Cimmerillion with the story of the creation was uh, really inspiring to me. The Lord of the Rings books were really important to me, but really what I think had the most direct influence on me starting off as a musician and an artist is The Hobbit. It's a simpler story than Lord of the Rings. It's really the story about Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit, or a halfling as he's also known throughout Middle-earth. It's a story about a hobbit, and the hobbits are people who live just kind of normal peaceful lives except for some you know squabbles with family members or neighbors but they enjoy food and tobacco and drink and like tending to their gardens and try to mostly mind their own business unless they're sticking their nose in their family or neighbors business but on that a pretty simple life and this is the story of Bilbo Baggins and a wizard named Gandalf and some dwarves that invite him fairly forcefully to go on an adventure and a quest to reclaim the dwarfs uh, stolen gold and also reclaim their home and uh, it's a fairly simple adventure fantasy story that when you get into Lord of the Rings has some deeper implications to it but I still think there's plenty in this story by itself that really gets the imagination going and is really stirring on its own merit. Um, I grew up watching the cartoon version of this, which is... Um, now some people like it, some people don't. I personally love it. I think it does a good job capturing the tone of the story. I enjoy the artwork. It's a really short form. It was a really rushed version of the story, but I think it hits a lot of the keynotes in pretty good ways for the adaptation it is. But then there's the book, um, and uh, there's one particular paragraph in the book that the cartoon also handles in a different way. Um, but there's this one paragraph here that I'm just going to read read a part of that really kind of got me thinking in a lot of ways. It's uh, now this paragraph comes right after, um, towards the beginning, right after Gandalf and the dwarves come to Bilbo's house and they've just had food, and the dwarves has this song about their home, and then there's this paragraph. It goes uh. 
As they sang, the hobbit felt the love of beautiful things made by hands and by cunning and by magic moving through him. A fierce and jealous love, the desire of the hearts of dwarves. Then something Tukish woke up in him, and he wished to go see the great mountains, to hear the pine trees and the waterfalls, and explore the caves, and wear a sword instead of a walking stick. He looked out the window. The stars were out in the dark sky above the trees. He thought of the jewels of the dwarf shining in the caves. Suddenly, in the wood beyond the water, a flame leapt up, probably someone lighting a wood fire. And he thought of plundering dragons settling upon his quiet hill and kindling it all into flames. He shuddered, and very quickly, he was plain Mr. Baggins of Bag End, Underhill again. It's really that paragraph in particular that has stuck with me over the years. I think that really stirred up something that was already in me. I grew up in rural western Oregon, outside of Roseburg, and I grew up running around in the woods. I grew up with mountains and evergreens. Um, I'd go hiking a lot. I'd go see waterfalls a lot. I'd go play by the river. Uh, I worked on farms. And just something about this that really made me want to see what was out further, what, what else was out there. Um, wish to go see the great mountains here hear the pine trees and the waterfalls, explore the caves, and to wear a sword instead of a walking stick. And, yeah, that really got me wanting to go see the rest of the country. And eventually, I figured out a way to do that. After some years of uh, playing guitar and working on songs, I, I started touring and I started traveling and I started getting to see uh, what was out there in the rest of the continent. And uh, I think I owe some of that early wanderlust that inspired me to try new things and explore uh, came from the story of someone who grew up in kind of a simple part of the world, um, at least at the time. Yeah, I think maybe it's a little hard to really convey just how much of a story really motivated me to to travel and to play music and try new things, but it was really important to me. Um, I really recommend, if you haven't, to read The Hobbit and to read the Lord of the Rings trilogy and then if you want more, uh, you can dive into the Cimmerillion or some of Tolkien's other works. Um, they all have a lot of meat to them. They give you a lot to think about. There's a good, if nothing else, a good emotional arc. Excellent storytelling, excellent world building. And I think it's really relevant to a lot of things I see in the world today. Um, and maybe I'll talk about some of the other books at some point, but really, this is about The Hobbit. Um, I also really enjoy the cartoon version. Like I said, I grew up with it. I think it really captures the tone of The Hobbit really well. I'm not as fond of the movie trilogy, um, or is it tried to... I think maybe it tried to do too much. Uh, it added, I think, a little too much, and I think that really took the focus off The Hobbit. I think it didn't really seem to find the heart of the story in the same way to me. It's just, there's all this other stuff going on, there's all of these action sequences that were not in the book. And if you enjoy it, that's fine. Uh, I just had a harder time getting into that one. But uh, the book and uh, even the cartoon are, will always be things that are really close to my heart. So anyway, we'll see how this goes. If you, if you like this, um, I may try doing more videos about things that inspired me, be that uh, books, movies, uh, music artists, 
Well, we'll see how it goes, but thank you very much for joining me, and have a good day. Well, I just uh, finished making this video, and then I found out that Christopher Tolkien uh, has passed. He was the son of J.R.R. Tolkien, who, um, after Tolkien's passing, uh, was in charge of the Tolkien estate. And he went back and he edited some of uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's unfinished works into longer form stories or alternate form stories that helped expand on J.R.R. Tolkien's literary world. And, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, so a sad surprise indeed but um feels like a little bit of an really feels a little bit like the end of an era because uh i think christopher did a great job keeping tolkien's works alive in some ways like i really think he did a good job with uh some of the stuff he finished some of the manuscripts he helped edit and finish of uh, his father's and uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance to check out Children of Huron or any of those uh, some good stuff but uh, whew, yeah I guess just needed to tag this on here so uh, so uh, big thanks to Christopher Tolkien uh, hats off to you, and uh, hopefully see you guys again one day. All right, <laughs> I guess that's it and it. Uh, thank you.